Last summer's wildfire on Aubrey Butte was a good example of the kind of interagency cooperation needed to fight wildfires. Our next segment will explore the Fire Free program and Project Wildfire. Fire Free is a program that was developed here in Central Oregon 11 years ago. It helps people learn how to protect their home and property against the devastation of wildfire. And empower the, the landowners and homeowners uh, to create a defensible space around their property and be aware of the threats of wildfire and what they can do to protect themselves. Project Wildfire is a group of county, state, and federal members along with homeowners associations and individuals who are concerned about wildfire here in Central Oregon. The group includes everyone from elected officials, members of the BLM and the Forest Service, and Department of Forestry. And we do that by building community fire plans, applying for grants to treat fuels on private lands, and coordinating with uh, the federal agencies and the state agencies to strategically treat fuels in the Wildland Urban Interface. Where we're standing uh, exactly behind me is Wildland Urban Interface. You see in the wildland fuel, trees, and brush, and then immediately on the edge of it, you see structures. That's the Wild and Urban Interface. We're on Aubrey Butte right now. We are in the area of the hillside fire that happened in August of 2007. A fire that was driven by winds across the, the eastern shoulder of Aubrey Butte. Homeowners along the area had not only created a good defensible space around their homes, but it created fuel bricks. This fire started from a very small spark that was in dry vegetation and headed up the hillside. But what people did to protect their homes was created fuel breaks. The fuel break on the north end of the fire gave firefighters a safe place to stand and allowed them to put out the fire and keep it from damaging any more homes. Well, fire breaks are similar to defensible space. Again, defensible space is that 30-foot zone around your home, where a fire break may be outside that 30-foot break to slow down the fire from moving into the fuels around your home. Defensible space is a, an area around your home that provides a safety factor between you and the wildfire that may be advancing towards your home. Aubrey Glen is a fine example of what homeowners and individuals can do to protect themselves. Aubrey Glen's Homeowners Association did a fantastic job with collaboration, working with government departments and other types of departments, mitigating those fuels. They took action. They came together as a group and as a whole and in one fell swoop certified their entire subdivision following the fire-free guidelines under Senate Bill 360. They knew that fire department could not protect all the homes all the time, so if their home was going to be protected, they need to do something about it. Fire free and the fuel breaks um, can help create actually a good environmental impact. You're removing some of the non-native flammable vegetation and replacing with native fire resistive vegetation. You're also taking that, a lot of people take it and have it chipped into mulch. When we look at these fires, we have one foot on the porch and one foot in the forest. That's the way we look at it. And people need to understand, you're living in a forest, the city of Bend is in a wildland urban interface zone. And in that, it's typically a fire prone environment, a natural fire prone environment. And so as citizens and, and residents here, we need to be aware of what we can do to help protect ourselves in that environment. We need to take action now this summer and get prepared for wildfire. One of the two goals of Fire Free is to find alternatives to burning. And through Department of Solid Waste and not Landfill, we're able to complete that cycle so that none of the brush that's cleared is actually burned or put onto the landfill. The, the stockpile we have here, this is raw material that's been brought in by, uh, by residents and uh, uh, landscaping contractors typically. Um, after we get a pile here, we bring a contractor in and they grind it into a smaller product that is then put into our composting area. We uh, pile it up in windrows and irrigate and turn it and it takes uh, four to six months to produce compost out of it. We, we also accept wood waste here at Knott Landfill. Again, rather than disposing in the landfill, if we can divert that, uh, it's, it goes for beneficial use. We take lumber um, here and it's ground up and it's shipped to a, a boiler in a Roseburg where it's converted into electricity. Fire Free produces obvious benefits for the resident by getting them to clear the yard debris from around their homes. On, on our side, that material goes for beneficial uses, either for producing compost or for wood waste for uh, producing electricity rather than disposing of it in the landfill. Another one of our important partnerships with the Fire Free program was with Bend Parks and Recreation. The district places a high priority on reducing fire fuels and environmental stewardship. The two go hand in hand very, very well. Uh, our crews have spent a good deal of this past winter cutting brush, limbing trees, and removing fire fuels. And here at 
is, is the product behind us, compost that, that those, those uh, items will make. And they, we put them right back into the park resources. Uh, it's a real high priority for the district to uh, maintain fire fuels, especially close to uh, people's homes. And one example of that would be this year where we have, we're out at Shevlin Park, uh, at Shevlin Commons, the, the, the development next to the park, and we're going to be reducing fuels out there. The district's a leader in environmental stewardship here locally, and the Fire Free program integrates into our stewardship program very, very well. Uh, we're reducing fire fuels. At the same time we're reducing fire fuels, we're, we're pr providing less competition for the desirable species we want to maintain over time. So it's a good match. The City of Bend Fire and Rescue has other structural agencies here in Central Oregon all work with their wildland agencies, whether it be U.S. Forest Service, Oregon Department of Forestry, or Bureau of Land Management. Uh, right now we're on some uh, Deschutes National Forest land west of Bend, adjacent to the Widgee Creek subdivision. Uh, one of our efforts this spring was to come in and do some underburning underneath the trees behind me. Uh, the goal was to reduce needle buildup and brush uh, so that in the event that we had a, a crown fire or a wildfire moving through this area, it wouldn't get into the canopies of trees. It's really important because we're never going to get rid of wildfire. When an area known as Lightning Alley, we'll get five lightning storms lasting three or more days every single summer. That means we're never going to get rid of wildfire. So what we hope to do is create situations where the fire behavior is really low and we can get firefighters in here safely to put it out. We're fortunate in Deschutes County that we have a Department of Forestry and an actual county forester. He's been able to lead the charge and help established programs through a lot of grant funding, almost three million dollars over the last couple of years, to help individual residents and private landowners reduce hazardous fuels on their property. Well, Simpson is uh, about a six or seven acre piece of county on property and it was overgrown with bitter brush, uh, ladder fuel, dead limbs hanging, uh, a, a lot of volatile, flashy type fuels, and then you had an overstory of ponderosa pines, which is essentially a, a fire resistant species. We went through we took all the bitter brush out, we limbed up the trees, we took out a thin a few trees, but the whole notion was to get rid of the ladder fuel component, and, but also keep as much shade on the property as possible because that actually uh, creates a cooler fuel, a fuel bed in the summer. Well, at the very base of our project is education, and that really is the only way to help motivate people to understand that we live in a fire-prone environment and that each of us have a responsibility to prevent those catastrophic losses. Well, the cooperative spirit has been around for many, many years, several decades. Years ago when agencies had to rely on each other for fire suppression, and now fire prevention's doing the same thing. We rely on other fire agencies to assist us and Ben as they do for us to assist in their communities. And the strength of Project Wildfire is that we have all of those members at the table, and so education goes a whole lot farther than if we were one agency alone. That relationship, when there's no smoke in the air, really creates great relationships when we have an incident because we know each other, we know where we treated fuels, we know what each agency is capable of, and it's essentially a seamless transition from planning to operations when we have the wildland fires. This fire prompted a quick response from uh, state, federal, and local fire agencies from all over Central Oregon to assist in this fire. The potential for this fire was great. We had many, many homes and many, many lives at risk with this fire. When we're out on a fire, all agencies show up, whether it be U.S. Forest Service, Oregon Department of Forestry, Bureau of Land Management, and other structural agencies, all working together for one purpose, protect that structure. If we have an average year, we'll have 470 fires and we'll burn 38,000 acres. That's the average. So what that means is that if you choose to live here, then you have to, and you must learn to live with fire. We have an amazing level of cooperation in Central Oregon, from the private landowner to the state government, all the way to the federal government. And that's a phenomenal effort. It's not something you don't see replicated anywhere else in the United States. And that's so important because wildfire crosses all boundaries. It doesn't matter land ownership. Well, that wraps up another program. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please join us next month for new stories on City Edition.